Over the past 23 years, Bruce Rastetter has owned a feed supply company, operated a top 20 contract hog enterprise, and has launched a new venture that will make him the fourth largest producer of ethanol in the United States. To say Rastetter is driven would be an understatement. I don't think there's any substitute for hard work and, and being around people that, that think the same. I early on had some people tell me, you know, don't spend much time in coffee shops. Don't go to the local co-op and listen to the latest rumor. You know, focus on how you're going to um, make a difference and, and uh, be better and get that sale and uh, add value to your customer that you're working with. I'm excited about the, the opportunity. Rastetter grew up on an Iowa farm, but had his eyes on other things. What's, what's clear to me in working with these investment bankers over the last 15 years is education is a wonderful thing. He received his undergraduate degree in the late 70s and went on to law school. Halfway through his studies, he quit and returned to his hometown of Alden, Iowa. In the early 80s, after farming and working at the post office part-time, he decided there was a niche to be filled in the livestock feed business. After putting together a business plan and getting a few local investors to loan him some money, he opened Alden Feed. As time went on, he saw another business opportunity contracting hogs, and in 1994 launched Heartland Pork. Through loans, business contacts, and venture capital investment, he raised $30 million to get the operation started. By the time Rastetter sold Heartland in 2004, the company was acknowledged as the 13th largest hog operation in the United States, with 540 employees, and 120 contract producers in three states. Though it might appear Rastetter had clear sailing starting his businesses, there were times when just getting bankers to say yes was a task in itself. And, and they probably had reasons to say no. At the time, I didn't think they had as good a reason as they should have, but they did say no. So it's okay to have rejection, and you just got to bounce back from that, go on to the next guy, learn from your mistakes, and, and ultimately get along. Not long before the sale of Heartland Pork, Rastetter was already planning his next move. In 2003, he launched Hawkeye Renewables. The plan was to open five biorefineries, produce nearly 500 million gallons of ethanol annually, and sell the distiller's grains as a feed additive. You know, I think, I think today people call that entrepreneurial, and I had, I had difficulty spelling that word. So I, and I still do at times. So, so I, I think what it is, is it's, it's back to knowing what you don't know. And if you question and then want to go to people that know uh, those aspects of the business, I mean, clearly we, we knew some, some business acumen on financing and employing people and those kinds of things in management, uh, but we didn't know uh, how to build an ethanol plant. We didn't know how to market ethanol. And so you go to people that do. And, and you interview them, making sure you make the right choices, and, and you try to make the best choice possible at that time in building the business. Based on his previous success, Rastetter was able to raise enough money to build two plants, start construction on two more, and plan for a fifth. When the four facilities are finished, the cost of construction will approach $600 million. When the fourth plant is completed, Hawkeye will need 120 million bushels of corn annually, and by the end of 2008, they plan to employ 260 people and have the capacity to produce 565 million gallons of ethanol every year. Rastetter feels one of the keys to his success is the ability to be flexible. If you don't succeed, are you going to try again? The, the belief that, you know, it, it's, it's not a perfect world, and, uh, but if we believe that we can continue to make improvement by doing the right thing, hiring bright people, having a business plan that makes sense, questioning ourselves as to whether uh, we've looked at all the sensitivities on, on cash flows and cost increases and what can go wrong rather than what can go right, I think you'll solve a lot more problems. One of the biggest problems Rastetter faced was the volatile market for both ethanol and its primary feedstock, corn. As corn more than doubled in price after Congress established production mandates, the price of raw ethanol declined by 25 percent. Those realities forced Rastetter to put construction of the fifth plant on hold. Market forces aside, 
Rastetter also contends with ethanol critics who blame the renewable fuel for higher food prices. I think it's really un unfortunate, the, the emotional reaction to corn going up a dollar and uh, that, that we're raising food prices in the country because it, it's clearly being overstated. Uh, what's raising food prices in this country is increase in energy costs, not increase in corn costs. And on the issue of increased water use, Rastetter wants consumers to know if it takes three gallons of water per gallon of ethanol, one of the things that they don't talk about is it takes eight gallons of water per gallon of gasoline to produce it. So we're much more efficient than that industry. But the reality is a message that doesn't get told is that the water we discharge is not processed water, does not touch any of the corn, and also is cleaner than what we're withdrawing from the aquifer. Despite any pitfalls, Rastetter believes wholeheartedly in the promise of renewable fuels. And he claims ethanol is fueling a brighter tomorrow for rural America, and one kid in particular from down on the farm. It's just a wonderful system that we have, and that can let somebody that grows up on a small farm that isn't, you know, best in his class, and you know, I wasn't a great student, and, and be able to have success and surround himself with, uh, with people that are brighter than him, that, that know all these things and, and, and can do great things. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.